little better with that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Here this morning to worship our Lord. It's Worldwide Communion Sunday, so Christians everywhere throughout the world are celebrating communion on this Sunday, and it's an honor to share with them uh, this holy sacrament. Now, we're so glad to see you. We welcome you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, fill us this morning with your Holy Spirit. Anoint us and empower us as we come to the table, as we hear the word, as we sing our praises and lift our prayers. Help us this day to be drawn closer to you and closer in union with you. We may feel your presence, know the joy of walking side by side with our Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, all. We have a couple of announcements. Um, these lovely ladies would like to present. You can follow along with them on page six in your bulletin. Good morning. Please note our observation of Pastor Appreciation Month in the bulletin. If you'd like to express your personal appreciation to Reverend Ray, we have placed a basket of note cards in both foyers for you to write and return to the labeled basket. We are also having a special coffee hour next week from 10 to 10.30 before worship. We hope you can attend. Good morning. I just wanted to give you a couple bits of information about the shoe boxes. I understand last week that you emptied that table that's out in the back, but we've moved them around. There are boxes at each exit of the church, and we have 147 boxes, so if you uh, don't feel bad, if there's not somewhere you are, go look at the other exits, okay? I mentioned to you that it's possible to trace what country your box goes to and it, it tells you to go online but Carol Dayton was here last week and she gave me a pack full of these. These are the Tracer uh, box labels and you use this special label here and it's got a little thingy on it so that and then you can go online and register the number that's here and you can find out what country your box went to. Some people like to do that. So if you'd like one of these, just see me, and after church, I'll leave them in the office, so if you're in during the week, you'll be able to pick one up. Thank you very much. Also on page six, you'll see the nursery staffing meeting announced. It will be Thursday, this Thursday, October 7th, at seven o'clock in room 209. I'm sure we could use your help. Um, also, we need some sound system helpers. Melanie and Art Lewis have offered to train folks. They said they can do it in just a couple of minutes. Some of them, some of us might take a little longer to be trained, but um, anyway, we'd appreciate some help on that. Online giving, if you make donations online or would like to, as I do, um, there's also there's a space now where you can add a memo like you would do on a paper check. There will be membership classes starting next Sunday, and they will be held on October 10th, 17th, and 24th, fourth after the services. Um, trunk or treat. We would love to have some more people bring their trunks to church. Um, Mine is already haunted, but I'm going to try to decorate it as well and then pack out candy from our trunks. And also, we have some flyers that are in the church office on the countertop. So if you are joining us, we'd appreciate it if you pass these out in your neighborhoods as well. We want a great big, gigantic turnout. Okay, please stand for our first hymn, number 378, Amazing Grace.
Toby and I have a couple of books at home that have the backgrounds of a lot of the hymns, probably a hundred or more hymns in there, and I would like to share those with you, but because of copyright laws, I can't do the whole thing. But I was told recently that we can summarize and get, we're not violating the copyright laws then. So I'm going to share something with you right now. This, back in 1963, Bill Gaither and a friend of his and his friend's dad, they were returning from an evangelistic service. And somehow they started talking about the thing of Jesus touching people and healing them. Like he healed the blind man, touched a, someone who was lame and they could walk again. And then uh, the dad said, you know, there's something special about that word touched. And then a couple minutes later he says, Bill, you should write a song about that. And the next morning, Bill had written the song uh, about, uh, he, he touched me, what he wrote. And a few days later, he and his friend sang it at a revival meeting, and boy, it was popular. Everybody loved that. And uh, this was 58 years ago, and uh, it became so popular that a lot of the uh, uh, popular singers sang it. Elvis Presley was one of them. And even today remains a favorite among many Christians. So, and now, I'm, I'm not going to sing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
like to remind you to fill out the attendance registers. And if you are a visitor, please fill out one of the visitor cards for us. Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. We are taught about uni unity and diversity in the body. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor, honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, we are going to share our thanks and concerns. Now please remember to hold the microphone up close to your mouth so everyone can hear you. I wanted to start off the praise time uh, by sharing that two of my friends are here from First Church, John and Sue, and we're glad to see them this morning. Welcome, welcome. Amen. Any other praises this morning? Something you'd like to share? Charlie's got one. Good morning. Praise a, uh, uh, a prayer meal. Anyway. There we go. There we go. Um, prayer concern for a friend of ours. Uh, her name's Stacy. Uh, a couple years ago, had cancer. It was clear. Reoccurred, so prayers for her and her uh, family as she fights that battle. And then, uh, as a praise, a happy, heavenly birthday for my dad today. He'll be 91. Amen. Amen. How about another praise? Something to give God glory. Over here, Pat's got one. We just praise God for healing you and making you here today. Amen. Amen. I, I praise the Lord for that. I, uh, Started getting a sore throat a week ago Wednesday, and my doctor said, ah, it's just a viral thing, it'll go away. It didn't. And so it got worse and worse and worse. I had a wedding for, uh, Saturday night. 
I preached on Sunday morning. When I finished the service Sunday morning, I wasn't feeling good at all. That's why I didn't preach you last week. Uh, Monday, I had someone cover for me. Walter covered the Bible study, and I went to see the doctor. And what it was was an abscess that had infect, got infected behind my tonsil or in the tonsil pack or whatever, sack. And uh, it was starting to close off my airway. She said, if I hadn't come in, she said, I'd have been in the emergency room. So uh, gave me heavy duty antibiotics, and I'm feeling fit and fiddle, <laughs> ready to go. So praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. I know the prayer concerns went out on Monday, and uh, we feel much better. Thank you. Any other praises or prayer concerns? Up in the balcony, we've got one. Uh, uh, Janie is in rehab uh, in Crofton. Thank you. So keep her in your prayers. Anyone else with a prayer concern? Yes. It's coming. <clears throat> we have a dear friend. His name is John Harrison. And the doctor's in the hospital because there's something else they can do for him. All right, so John. His, his name is John, and he had a uh, heart attack last uh, January or February, and uh, ever since then his heart is just getting worse, and he's getting called by the dear. Let's keep John in our in prayers. Your prayer, in your prayers, please. Amen. Thanks, good Lord. Wanda has a cancer remission already. She's doing all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other praises or prayer concerns? We're so glad you're here this morning. So we didn't hit one of my challenges, and that was 100 people in attendance in September. So I have moved the date. It's now October, and we're in October. So the new challenge is 100 people in attendance in October. So start inviting your friends and family and even your enemies. It'll be okay. All right. But we are meeting the challenge, by the way, of receiving more offerings than we spend. And so I thank you for your faithfulness. The matching of the PPP money has ended now, and it was a little over $12,000 that was matched. Praise the Lord. And that will go into the general fund after we pay off the PPP, and it will help us get closer to budget. So I thank you for your faithfulness. Continue to be faithful as we continue uh, in the process of of meeting the bills and the budget of the church uh, and continue the ministry of the church for Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's spend some time in prayer. The Lord's Prayer this morning is the traditional version with the trespass and trespasses. It will be on the screen. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the way that you carried Beth through her treatments and continues to be with her for her treatments. We thank you that you are with each of us. I thank you for the healing of my throat through the antibiotics. I thank you for uh, being with Wanda through her surgery. I thank you for being with Sue through her surgery. I thank you, Lord, uh, for each person that we've named uh, that uh, needs your touch, needs our prayers. We are a praying church. We have prayer warriors here. And we pray, Lord, that you would hear the, the cry of your people. Lord, speak to us and, and uh, let your spirit move amongst us and uh, guide us and direct us as we worship you. Lord, on this Sunday that is uh, Worldwide Communion Sunday, uh, we pray, Lord, that Christians everywhere around the world, around the clock, uh, as the time differences uh, exist, that uh, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. We will be celebrating together at the table of Holy Communion. It is so powerful when the family gathers for a meal. And today the Christian body 
gathers for the meal of the Lord's Supper. Lord, we pray for uh, our pastors uh, in the past. Uh, we, we thank you for them and in the present and the future uh, during this month of, of uh, clergy appreciation, pastor appreciation. Uh, we thank you for those who have led us here at Trinity over the years. Some are with you already and some are still with us and, and we thank you for them. Uh, we pray for the sisters and brothers of faith that uh, receive the call to lead congregations, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for the United Methodist Church as we uh, process uh, the differences that we have theologically and uh, for the concerns that are before us. Uh, we pray for our nation and the differences we have before us. And we pray for those who are still battling with the, the, the pandemic, with the COVID. And we pray for the health and strength of, of our sisters and brothers around us and for ourselves. Pray, Lord, that you would be ever so present. We, we can't say that enough. Present with us as we strive to be present with you. That you would be glorified. Lord, we thank you that uh, a friend of mine starts a new appointment this morning. His name is Trevor, Pastor Trevor. He left First Church and is now serving another appointment. Uh, we pray, Lord, for his new beginnings. We pray that you would continue to use him as a man of God and continue to heal First Church at the loss of their assistant pastor. Lord, be with us as we continue to serve you and to worship you this day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Join with me, if you will, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Now is the time that we will worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Please be generous with the gifts.
that each cent would be used for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is number 391, Oh Happy Day and Fix My Choice.
Father God, the Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're here today to hear more about the Apostles' Creed, particularly the communion of saints, which is the fellowship of all Christians living and dead. We ask that you watch over Ray as he preaches, that the words penetrate us so we better understand what he's talking about and what the Bible says. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So we're still in the Apostles' Creed, just a couple more weeks, and uh, then we'll be uh, through that and into the next series. I'm tripping myself here. All right. I want to start just by saying an affirmation, a, a strength, a, a, a joy. God will work things out. Amen? Amen? Turn to someone and say, God will work things out. I know that that's something we all need to hear because life is sometimes difficult. Life has troubles and, and, and difficult moments. You know, we've talked about people battling cancer and, and Janie with her medical issues and, 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 pre, and, and others with surgeries and healing from surgeries and, and there's financial issues in our culture and we're all fighting the pandemic and dealing with that. And so I just think we need to hear that God will work things out. I hope that's not a revelation. I hope that's not something brand new. If it is, I'm glad you heard it today. At times, God works things out when we don't even see it coming. Have you ever experienced that? Where God works something out and you didn't even know God was doing something. Uh, like when I planned this sermon series. I planned this sermon series back in August. And as I put it together, I had no idea at the, at the time that the communion of the saints would fall on Worldwide Communion Sunday. I just put it together and laid it out, but the Lord had a plan, had a plan for this to work out. Only God knew that this sermon would fall on this Sunday. I didn't even notice it until a couple of weeks ago when I was looking at the sequence of sermons and preparing ahead of time, and, and there it was. Communion of the saints, a fellowship between Christians living and dead. I'm not talking about the walking dead, you know, that you see on TV, some of them. I'm talking about the living, that's us, and the saints that have gone before us. Uh, sometimes they call it the quick and the dead. I, I never could understand that because I wasn't that quick. Uh, but the word quick means alive. And so those who are alive, living, and those who have passed. And that's comforting to me. To know that today in Worldwide Communion Sunday, and every time we have communion, every time we worship, every time we pray, that the host of heaven, the, 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 the saints that have gone before, I, I think personally of my mom and my dad and my grandfather, my grandmother, and, and others are, are with me, are here with me. Uh, they are worshiping with me. On Worldwide Communion Sunday, we remember that the body of Christ is universal. It's worldwide. It's not just here in Annapolis, at Trinity. It's everywhere where the body of Christ dwells. It's everywhere where Jesus is held as Lord and Savior. Doesn't mean that all people are Christians worldwide, but it means that there are Christians worldwide. It means that Christians in every part of the world are part of the body of Christ. All Christians everywhere are part of of the body of Christ, the living and the dead. In Paul's epistle to the Romans, he writes that we are to offer God our lives. We are to offer God our all. In Romans 12, 1, we read, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Christians everywhere are called to offer themselves to Christ's service. 
When we join a church, we often pledge to support that church with our prayers and our tithes and our talents and our efforts. We support the ministry of Jesus Christ with all that we have. We're also called to conform to God's ways rather than the ways of the world. Romans 12, 2 reads, Do not conform to the pattern of the world, this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In Sunday school this morning, and by the way, uh, we do have Sunday school for the whole family at 9 o'clock if you'd like to join us. We have an adult class that I'm leading. We have a youth class. We have a children's class, and we have a nursery. And we also are having our fellowship time between services now instead of after service. So someone told me to remind you once again, we reminded the announcement, but remind you once again that there is a time for coffee and fellowship between Sunday school and worship from 10 to a little before 10.30. But in Sunday school this morning, we were talking about growing closer to the Lord and we talked about what we feed our spirit. You know, I remember when my children were little and occasionally they, I would be watching something on TV and one of them would come in the room and I'd have to change the channel. You ever caught yourself doing that? Now why would I allow my spirit to be fed something I wouldn't let my children watch? But I think somehow I'm mature enough to handle maybe sin on television. So Paul says to conform not to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. John says, Christ must become greater. I must become less. We need to fill our spirits with the things of God. Have you ever wondered what God's will is for your life? Anybody ever wondered that? I, I remember as a kid, what does God want for me to want, want me to do? What does God want? And I tell you, ministry was not the thing I came up with. It was not what I thought God wanted me to do. He, he made clear later. Paul suggests that if we want to know God's will, we need to put more of God in our life. That's that Romans 12, 2 passage. Conform not to the pattern of the world, but be transformed after renewing of your mind. Do you remember the simple example I, I gave last week? Several people have said they really like that. The glass being half filled with water and air. Remember that example? So you got a cup or a glass. And the glass represents our lives. And the glass is half filled. And so it's, filled with, it's half filled with water and half filled with air. And I asked the question, how do you get the air out of the glass? And, you know, we could come up with a lot of scientific things about capping the the glass and vacuum pump and get the air out. But the simplest way to get the air out of a glass is to pour more water in. Because as you pour more water in, the air comes out and the glass is filled with water. And I use that as an example for our faith. If we want to get closer to God, it, it's, it's not a matter necessarily of, of stop doing all the bad things, although we want to do that. It's focusing on doing more of God things. Focusing on love and focusing on the scriptures and focusing on our prayer life and focusing on our, our walk. Because the more of God we put into our life, the less room there is for Satan. You know, water represents the things of God and the air represents the things of the devil or Satan or sin. To get less sin in our lives, we simply need to add more God. Add more God. Paul reminds us and teaches us that we are all part of one body, the body of Christ. Romans 12, 4 to 8. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same function, so in Christ we, through though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. 
Paul gives us another teaching too. This teaching on the body of Christ is seen by many as essential reading. It's part of the passage that was read this morning, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Paul writes that all, all who are in the spirit form one body, and he goes on and says there is no Jew or Gentile in Christ. There is no slave or free in Christ. They're, they're all one in the spirit. Male or female, we're one in the spirit. The communion of the saints, the body of Christ, Christians around the world are celebrating today. It doesn't matter what nation they're from. It doesn't matter what language they speak. It doesn't matter uh, male or female. It doesn't matter the hue of their skin. If their heart is for Christ, we are all part of the same body. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 17, again, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot says, should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not a, an, an eye, uh, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Now, I, I've grown up over the years around people that had handicaps. I went to college at, the, at Ann Arbor Community College with a young man who came into school uh, with a backpack over his flipper. And he would throw that backpack on the ground and he would open it with his feet and he would take notes with his feet. I'm not suggesting a church cannot function without all the parts. And he learned to function without arms. But a church cannot function to the full capacity of its ability without all the parts. I hope that comes across right. I'm not saying that if we don't have someone to prophesy or someone to speak languages or, or whatever, that we can't be the church. But we cannot be all that God wants us to be unless all the parts are active in the life of the church. God has placed us all in the body of Christ for a reason, his reason. Remember, if we wish to know God's will, we need to dig deeper into God. More of God, less of us. I wonder, do we need to hear this today? More of God and less of us? John the Baptist knew this truth, John 3.30. He must become greater, I must become less. Paul encouraged us to think and act as one. We are all significant to the body of Christ, to Trinity. Every one of us is a part of this church. Every one of us is significant in the life of this church. We are to encourage one another. Uh, most every Sunday, Warren talks about the church needing more encouragement. And I like that, Warren. We need to encourage one another more and more. Uh, we are to suffer with one another. When one person suffers, we all should feel that pain and try to encourage and uplift another. We are to rejoice with one another. When a new child is born, when a new marriage is formed, when a, a, a new job is gotten, when things are, are, are going well, we need to rejoice with those who rejoice. But when there are deaths and when there are sicknesses and when there are difficulties, we need to also mourn with those who mourn. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says, If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Paul continues in chapter 12 to talk about some of the ways we are part of the body. Some of those ways Paul, Paul lists are apostles, that's church planters, uh, prophets, teachers, workers of miracles, healers, helpers, the wise to give guidance, speakers of different tongues, interpreter, interpreters of different tongues. As the body of Christ, we are encouraged to eagerly desire these greater gifts. In 
1 Corinthians 12, 31, that passage ends with, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. We are not alone. It is part of our Christian faith to believe that those who went before us, who died in faith, are still around us and with us. Not only are we surrounded by the body of Christ here and now, but we have those who have gone before us surrounding us. And that brings me peace. As I stand in this pulpit, I, I, I often feel the presence of my Father who stood also in this pulpit. This should encourage us to run our race keeping our focus on Jesus. But there are others with us along the way. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 reads this way. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, the saints that have gone before us, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. I'm going to stop there for a minute. Paul's getting ready to talk about a running race. And if we just finished the Olympics, and it seems like the outfits get skimpier and skimpier each year. And I don't know whether they're trying to draw a bigger audience by those skimpy outfits or whether they're realizing that the less that they can have as drag in a swimming pool, running races, whatever, that, that the more they can streamline. And that's what Paul says here. He says, throw off everything that hinders. We should heed that word. What is it that hinders our Christian faith? What is it that, that hinders our walk with Christ? What is it in our life that we need to shed so that we might be drawn closer? So let me back up and read that again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our struggles in life, our sins, are not so large that God cannot forgive us. But we need to turn from sin. We need to confess our sins. We need to shed our sins. Hebrews 12, 4 reads, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Let's take encouragement from knowing we are all together. We are in this together, the living and the dead in Christ. We face each day with the communion of saints, past and present, and we have more than ourselves. We have each other and each other's back. Turn to someone near you and say, I've got your back. It's a good feeling to know that someone's got your back. That someone's praying for you. That someone's lifting you up. That someone's there at a moment's notice. Because we're family. Trinity's a family, but we're part of a larger family, the body of Christ, the church universal. Next week, we're going to talk about forgiveness of sins. That's one of my favorites, because without forgiveness of sins, we'd all be lost. Amen? Amen. Please read Matthew 6, 14 to 15, 1 John 1 to 9, John 3, 16. You all should be able to quote that one, right? And 2 uh, Corinthians uh, 5, 17. If you have uh, the need to follow the, the hymnal, you can. It's on number 13, page number 13. Um, but it'll, the words will also be on the overhead. The challenge this morning that we're going to give before communion, so that as you come to the table, uh, you can pray for the challenge if you'd like. Uh, depending on the clock, we may or may not do the last song. So. I'm giving the challenge now uh, is to have a more family view of 
loved each other. You know, when my dad first went to Mount Zion, uh, the people were amazed that he knew their names. It was the second Sunday and he knew their names. And um, one lady stopped and it was a little country church, a little family church. And she said, Reverend Mack, she said, how do you know our names already? He said, well, I'll tell you my secret. If you don't tell too many people, and I've been telling people for years, it's a little secret. But uh, he says, I'm calling everybody Mr. and Mrs. Mullen, and those who aren't are correcting me. <laughs> and in another one of his churches, because he had two churches, he said, I, I was calling everybody Mr. and Mrs. Catterton, and, and, if, and if they weren't, they were correcting me, and I was learning their names that way. Um, we got name tags, and name tags are not just for your pastor, who's a little nimble up here. Uh, not nimble up here. They're trying to remember your names. Name tags are also so you can know each other's names. I would venture to say some of you have been coming to the same church for a year or two or three or four, and there are other people like that, and you still don't know each other. Because we tend to sit in the same seat most every week. Your pastor's going to change that one Sunday. I'm going to do something that's going to shake you up. I did it one Sunday at another church, and and the and the lady the man he met me at the door, shaking hands. He said that was very interesting, Pastor, the way you did that. He said I I, I really thought it was interesting. Don't do it again. <laughs> so um, now you have something to look forward to. Uh, what we're going to do, but uh, the challenge then is to start treating each other like family. Now, not a strange family. I want you to treat each other like loving family and uh, help each other. There are some of us that are getting older and can't open doors well and can't walk well. And help them. Don't just run past them. Don't just, you know, get antsy behind them, tell them to hurry up. You wouldn't do that to your grandma, would you? You wouldn't do that to your great grandma, would you? You take your time. Let's take time with one another. Let's love one another. That's the challenge this morning from the Sermon on the Communion on the Saints. All right. All right. There is a great thanksgiving. It's the prayer of consecration uh, for the elements. And so it's on page 13. It will also be on the overhead. Follow along and read responsibly. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, 
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. I want to give a few challenges. One is that this is not Trinity's table. This is not a Methodist table. This is not my table. This is the Lord's table. And all who are here are welcome at the table of the Lord. I also want to ask that while you're waiting your opportunity to come to the table, that you spend time praying. That you spend time praying about the sins in your life that you would like uh, God to, to lift and remove that hinders you. See, remove all the things that hinder you. And uh, so be praying about that, confessing your sins to God in silent prayer. Uh, we're going to sing the hymn later if we have time, but I'm going to ask Karen if she would just play something softly as we come to the table this morning so that we're not focused on a hymn, we're not focused on singing or anything like that, but we're coming, we're hearing uh, some beautiful music, we're praying, and we're coming to the table of the Lord. Let me find my hand cleaner and put my mask on. I will offer the bread as the ushers lead us forward. The cups are in the altar rail, and you may partake as you come to the table. You can stay at the table as long as you like. We're not doing uh, tables and dismissal. Uh, you come, pray, return to your seat as you feel led, and then others can follow as they see the opening and the opportunity as the ushers lead us.
they bring to me and do them. So the first thing I want to make sure we agree on, communion Sundays don't count for overage. Those minutes I've been collecting, communion Sundays don't count. Are we in agreement? Yes. Okay, then we'll sing the song. Because if we, if we weren't in agreement, then we couldn't sing the song because I don't want to use all my extra minutes. 382, have thine own way, Lord. Christ. That is our prayer. Amen. Amen.